Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome and thank you for coming. My name is Tevya. No, not that Tevya. No, not this guy. He's from Russia. I lived 50 years after him. And I lived in a place in, well, kind of on the border between Russia and Poland, a little town called Dubinki. It was one of those towns that, well, to live in, as Jews living in a group, sometimes we were Polish, and sometimes we were Russian, depending which way, the, which way the political winds would blow. And we managed well, we really did. We, had, we, we knew how to handle our neighbors. We did. We managed to give them what they wanted for days. We did a good job. For generations, we lived there, we did well. Occasionally, a pogrom, a broken window, a stolen sheep, a beating up, beating up, something like that. But for the most part, we did all right. They left us alone. And then, and then all of a sudden, the winds really changed. And the Germans came. And they didn't stop. They, didn't, well, they wanted everything we had, including our lives. And they burned our town, they took our, our, our possessions, and they killed our children and killed some of us, and then the rest, of course, they sent off to these terrible camps. My wife Zelda and I wound up in a place called Treblinka, where we watched our children, our neighbors, and our relatives be murdered. Somehow we survived that. The war ended, and after the war, they sent us to another camp, something called a displaced persons or DP camp, where we spent, spent a couple of years. Now, that camp was almost as bad as the concentration camp, except they weren't killing us, so that was an advantage. And then we left there. We had to go. And the question was, after we were displaced, where was there to go? There was no home to go back to. We knew that somewhere to the south of us, there was a land called Palestine. This was the land that was promised to the Jews. I knew that, but somehow we had to get here, get there. So Zelda and I, sick, weak as we were, set off on foot to find Palestine. It was a difficult journey, and, and the difficulties of that journey We'll give you a lot to think about, and we invite you to take that journey with us, is what we're going to do this evening. But once you take that journey, and you see how important it was, and how it led, how it, what it led to, your lives will never be the same. This is the tale of a world that has disappeared. It was a little world full of poverty and prayer, full of brutal gaiety and innocent goodness. It was a world of ghettos and synagogues, of little schools and old leather books, of remembered glories and unpainted villages. On the Sabbath Eve, this little world lit its candles across the land of Europe. In the light of its countless candles, old legends breathed again and old hopes decked themselves out in the white shawls of prayer. This little world of Jews, so old, so wise, so harmless, was famed for a single export, greatness. Out of its crippled little streets came scholars and heroes, poets, philosophers, scientists, and great nabobs of industry came without end from its unknown and shambling highways. But none of the greatness it exported ever built fine towers for the little world out of which it came. None of the riches it put forth ever enriched its own little battered streets. It was a magic world, this world that bore the name Jew, forever flooding the earth with greatness and riches, and forever itself remaining poor and little and without power, and remaining forever without friends. This world of the Jew, that had poured its genius and greatness into all cups but its own, was, 
in the hour of its doom without friends. No friends spoke out when its death notice was posted. When its death was decreed, the death of all its streets and houses and people, there were no friends on earth or miracles in heaven to stay destruction. Furtively, the governments of the earth kept their silence as a merry and pious world of Jews was removed from history. Out of his burning houses, out of his crematoriums and lime pits, the Jew of Europe looked on a murderer called the German. But beyond the murder face of the German, there were other nation faces to be seen, dim and watchful faces, whose silence was a brother of murder. And when the Jew of Europe died, when the six millions were killed in the furnaces and gas chambers of the German, these cries were in their throats. Where is humanity? Where is the goodness of man that we help create? Where are my friends? Nowhere, little banished Jew. Nowhere, little murdered world. They were nowhere. They were busy with other things, little psalm singer. They were busy with other things. But all this is known. There is no need to dwell on the wise and wherefores of it. History will sum up the tale someday, and people will read it plainly. History will say that of all the things that happened in that time, our time, the slaughter of the Jews of Europe was the only thing that counted forever in the annals of man. The proud orations of heroes and conquerors <coughs> will be a footnote in history beside the silence that watched this slaughter. Yes, in the history books, it will not be the victories. It will be this silence that identifies and condemns our era. And so it came to pass, we can say in the interest of brevity, and so it came to pass that a world was killed and all its shops and kitchens and songs and memories removed from the earth. The Jew of Europe was hunted into every corner of that land and killed. This is the prologue of our tale and thus ends the prologue. This is the scene of our tale. It is a graveyard, a woe-begone graveyard that has seen better days. Where is this graveyard? In what land does it greet the pale moon? In a faraway land, in a place where Jews once lived and live no more. Beyond this shambles of a graveyard, two figures are moving down a dark road. Two Jews, two remnant Jews of Europe, plod slowly the dark road. Their feet drag, for they carry a heavy burden. Their hearts are like stones that read, a dead world lies here. They're moving in a world without streets or faces. They're moving toward a land of love, of milk and honey, of holy songs called Palestine. Where's Palestine? Which way does it lie? God only knows. To the south, to the south. The fair land where the lemon trees bloom lies to the south. The bright land where God sits in a tabernacle calling his children back. Eretz Yisrael, Yerushalayim. These are the two words left in the dark night. All the other words are death. These two Jews, in the dark of the night, in the graveyard, are obsessed with the two words. The great world is busy with many projects. The continent of Europe echoes with the tumult and wail of a rebirth. New businesses are being launched. New ideas are hatching in the debris of cities. But these are not for the two who sit here in the dark graveyard with a spark of Eretz Yisrael. 
in their lame bodies. Does one open a shop under the gallows where one's father was hanged? Does one return to picnic near the lime pit where one's children were slain? Europe is a gallows and a lime pit for these two. There is no doorstep in Europe upon which they can sit. They, they, there are murderers looking out of every window of Europe. There are dead people under all the roads of Europe dead Jews, moaning to Jewish feet. Fly, fly, Jewish grandmothers and infants, wail out of all the brooks and rivers of Europe. Fly, fly. The very word Europe falls like a whip on the shoulders of these two, and a voice still echoes out of the seven years of dying. Be gone. Be gone. No, Columbus, you're satisfied. And it's Israel he's going to find. This Samson without eyes. This little piece of a Jew is going to lead us to the holy land of Palestine. <sighs> Do you know where we are, Tavia? Do you know even in which world we sit? In this world or the other world? No, which way do we go now, Tevye? Chocham, point me out again. Where are the cedars of Lebanon and the fountains made honey? <laughs> Shh, Yoga. you get tired from talking. I'm from living, Tevye, I'm tired. Tired of the day and tired of the night. Hi, my sons and daughters. What is left without them? Two old worms that turn around and around in the night looking for the Holy Land. Tevye. Where are we? We are in some kind of a park. Still, sit still. Enjoy yourself. A park? I can see what kind of a park. A Tavia park. Where everybody comes to have a fine time, six feet underground. A graveyard, he calls a park. A graveyard is the same on top as a park. Why don't you ask them to go to Palestine? Who should I ask, Zelda? The people in the park, Tavia. Lie down on the lake and call down to them. How'd it go? Which way to toy? We will come for you, Shalai. The Red Sea will open, and Tevye and Zelda will walk into the Holy Land, and Bevan and Churchill and all the Balabatin will be drowned in the water. If somebody is going to be drowned, Tevye, I know who it is. <sighs> Maybe a Jew lies here. If it's a grave, a Jew lies there, you don't have to worry. I remember the grave of Reb Zandel. On his grave was written what a fine man he was and how he dreamed to go to Palestine before he died. Aye, good thing he didn't get started like us. <laughs> Tell you, I don't like it here. It's not so bad, Zelda. Come sit by me, I don't feel so good. Ah, look what I found there. The Star of David, here on a stone. It's a Jewish stone. Now I can feel proud to sit here. Some people have government buildings. And Jews have stones in a graveyard with fine writing on them. Wait, Zelda. Wait till you see in Palestine the writing on the stones. Here lies Abraham and Saul too. And David the king. Abraham, there was a fine man for you who never did wrong. Who brought his whole family with all his cows and sheep to Eretz Israel walking in a warm cloak under the stars because God told him which way to go, which way to turn, which was the right river to cross, which was the wrong river. If God will tell me I will go the right way. I will go like Abraham into Eretz Israel, only without my cows or sheep, without my sons or daughters. You know where they are, God, close to you in heaven. By your right hand, only Tevye is left. Tevye and Zelda. I'm not asking for many things, like we used to ask in the old days, give us health, give us our daughters should marry good, give us three days of rain for the pastor. Who has daughters now? And pastors? No, nothing I ask now except, where is it? Which way? 
right, left, backwards, forwards. It's easy for you to say, up, see up there, just, just point with something. A star, the way to Palestine, Yerushalayim, the land of milk and honey. Tevye, somebody is here. It can't be an answer. God don't answer so quick as a rule. It must be somebody else. You are a Jew? Ask him first if he's I, dead or alive. I know what to ask. If he's a Jew, then dead or alive, he's our friend. I'm, I'm your friend. Ah, I am Tevye <coughs> from the Binti, and this is my wife, Zelda. We are here a few hours only. Do you belong in this place? I was sleeping here. Uh, on top or underneath? I'm alive. I can still smell the night and see the stars shining. My bones can still move from place to place. I am a very rare type, a young Jew, still alive in Europe. I heard you praying before. I do not like to hear a man praying. I heard prayers in Treblinka. Treblinka? Oh, Treblinka, my sons and daughters. Did they die in Treblinka, Mama? Maybe I saw them. I saw millions of Jews die. I used to hide in a tree at night and count them when they were walking naked, two by two to the furnaces, and praying. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu My father's God suffered a great misfortune. The earth was his face, but vermin overran it, and he had his eyes, so he could not see. One doesn't pray to such a God, one pities him and tries to forget him, like a poor relation. My name is David. I came to the graveyard this afternoon to rest, because I have a long way to go. A long way? Where do you go, David? To Palestine. You were going there? To Eretz Yisrael? Yes. The English have forbidden it. The English have put a fence around Palestine. But there are three things the English fence cannot keep out of Palestine. Rain, the wind, and a Jew. Zelda, we are saved. I asked God to point, and he sent somebody to point for him. No, Dovidol, which way? Point the way for us. Talk, Dovidol. Which way is it to Eretz Israel? Over the bridge. Uh, what bridge? Where is there a bridge? The bridge is there. Where do you see a bridge, Dovidol? There. Don't make fun of us. We are old and sick. Since yesterday, my head is turning around and around. The Dovidol, bridge. there is no bridge here. If there was a bridge, there would be a river. And if there is a river, there wouldn't be a graveyard. So how can there be a bridge? It leads to Palestine, the bridge. I saw it when I was asleep. I, I thought maybe God had heard me. But why should he hear me all of a sudden? In Treblinka, I talked louder. But who heard? Jewish prayers cannot get to God, Tanya, without an English visa. This is the new law. Yesterday, our prayers needed a German visa. And the day before yesterday they required a Spanish visa. You see, our trouble is, Tevya, we have been praying in the wrong countries. When I was a boy in Hebrew school, I did not know this. My father taught me that I belonged in the land where I was born. Then, one day, all the Jews in that land were gathered together, gathered together like a pile of garbage and burned up. From this, I learned that the teachings of my father were wrong. Now the English say to me, come, go back to your father's village and start over again and breed another pile of garbage. And I answer them, a earth, a curse on all the lands and villages of Europe. I go to find a corner of the earth where Jews do not turn into garbage, where Jews can die on a battlefield instead of a crematorium, on their own battlefield for a change. I go to Palestine over the bridge. <coughs> Tevye, I remembered something. What? what? What is there to remember? Tevye, do you know what day yesterday was? 
<sighs> Yesterday was nothing. Today is even less, and tomorrow I can give to the Machamavas for a present. Today is Friday. Yesterday was Thursday. A black day in a black year is not something to be noticed. Tell me, today is Friday. Friday? When is Friday? Tonight. Tonight is Friday? Here's your tzadur and samas. It's Friday night. On Friday night, only a bound tzifila wears a talus. So, you be the bound tzifila. Oh Lord, my heart gives thanks. Blessed is the Sabbath rest. Blessed is the Holy One, exalted and hallowed in God's name in the world. Bless his loving kindness in the morning and his faithfulness at night. For thou, O oh Lord, hast made me rejoice thy words. I sing thy praises. Oh, here in the graveyard, a sick and dying Tavia and his Zelda keep alive the ancient kingdom of the Jew, the little kingdom of Friday night. Dynasties have come and gone in Europe, but this kingdom of the Jew has remained unaltered by a phrase. In this never-never land of God's word, the Jew of Europe dressed himself up every Friday night in the royal garb of talis and candlelight. However lowly his lot, or grim his days, on the Sabbath eve he stepped like a monarch <coughs> into the realm that waited for him. It is no less with Tevye on this night. Tevya, broken, half mad, lost and bewildered, looks on the candles of the Sabbath Eve and beholds in their nimbus his promised land. It's a mirage of a kingdom, but Tevya's soul enters it easily and happily, like an old traveler. There are no voices to sing for him, no Sabbath feast, no synagogue to rejoice in, but Tevya, mighty and ancient dreamer, needs none of these. Heaven is above him, full of music, furniture, and love. Who can want more? And who can ask for more than to be a king, with the smile of God for a Sabbath crown? So in this graveyard tonight, his soul battered by horrors, his bones stripped almost of life, the incorrigible Tevya, last of a wondrous tribe of Tevyas, raises aloft to God the word spat on by the world, the word Jew, and gives thanks for its presence on his brow. With everlasting love hast thou loved, hast thou loved the house of Israel, thy people. Thou hast taught us thy Torah with its commandments, laws, and judgments. The dullard sees not, nor does the wicked man understand. When evil men spring up with us, then those who perish and do only evil, that evil will destroy them. Hear, O Lord, thy servant rejoice. Hear, hear, hear. And there are dreams in Tevye's head. Tevye is the memories in Tevye's head make a mist in front of his eyes. And out of this mist come the happy days he knew. Come holy people singing in the synagogue of Dubinki. Come yesterday and the day before yesterday. Come Tevye's friends and Tevye's world that began long before Dubinki. That began when Abraham and his flock crossed the Jordan. Saul, Saul, king of Israel. Saul and his mighty captains. Saul, Saul. Saul, Saul. Who are you? We are men of Yabesh Gilead. 
Why are you weeping? We are doomed to die. Who has doomed you? Nehash, king of the Ammonites. His army has overrun Israel. They stand now before Gilead and order us into slavery. Perhaps not slavery. Who knows? Perhaps we can make friends with the Ammonite. Do nothing to anger him. Show him how learned and law-abiding we are. Woo him by turning a kindly face to him. A kindly face with one eye in it? Saul, Nahash has ordered the right eye of every Israelite to be plucked out, so that with my left eye is hidden behind my shield, I will have no eye to see with. I will no longer be the warrior. He will leave our youth enough vision to be slaves. He has given us seven days of surrender. The soldiers laugh outside our city, and behind our walls bend top like this one. With fear, without hope, men are ready to yield Gilead, to be blinded, goaded, defiled. Men are ready to yield all Israel. No, speak the truth, not all Israel. That's stupid talk. Let, let me put the matter for both sides, King Saul. Nehash the Ammonite will take what he wants, but he's only a man. He cannot devour us. The quicker we surrender, the less he will take from us. And what can he carry away from Israel? Houses and land? No. He will leave us our houses and land, and we will raise new flocks. And I say this, a portion of life is better than none at all. Is it? We're powerless against the enemy, Saul. We've got no armies, no armor, no spears. We have hearts. He calls it all Ba'amufko. Saul has been slain his thousands. And you're with him. You will save us? Yes, we're going to battle. It is you, Saul, who will destroy Israel, not Nehash the Ammonite. For we will be removed from the earth, our houses, our flocks, every stone in Gilead will be dismembered, and every man and child. That is possible. Saul, speak carefully. Words can lead to destruction. Nehash the Ammonite is a great and powerful king. A king who comes to the land, not his, is only as great as his people are little. My kingdom is not a matter of flocks and houses and the earnings of careful men. It is a matter of the spirit. Kingdoms are more, are more than that. A dream, a love, a symbol of mankind. So I say, men of Yahweh Julian, Go back to your city and tell your people my words. I go to raise an army from among the shepherds and workers of the tribes of Israel. And if there are any who refuse to join me, I will cut the sinews of their oxen, and they will then be idle in the of prophet. And if they still refuse to join me in the family of Israel, I will order the sinews of the men to cut along with their oxen. For what use is a man who is willing for his soul to die that his legs may live? Saul shall slay his thousands. You old man of brave heart, tell the people of Yahweh Gilead this for me, for I am too busy for speaking. Tell them we have made a land for Israel, built it, straightened it with their dead and living. And skies no prayers. Its hills are covered with our cattle and our memories. Out of the whole world, we have married only this land, and it is our bride. We whisper our love to it this at night. Tell our people, old man, that a stranger is come for our bride, the fair Hebrew bride of Israel, a mighty stranger with robber banners who wishes to stir, to despoil her and use her basely. So be it, if it is to be. Let the stranger take our bride from us, but only after we stretch bubbles under the sky. Let him have the bride of this world to sport with, but only after the bridegroom is dead. Praise Saul! Tell the old man, that however powerfully armed the copper is outside, within he is only armed with grief. And that we of Israel are armed within with love. Love for every stone, hill, 
tree and brook of our homeland, for the sound of its tongue, for the look of its face. Who is there who can conquer the unconquerable, the violence of love? On this the world and its heavens are built. The man who loves what belongs to him, and that can only be taken from his dead hands. Praise Saul! Go tell all Israel that Saul their king bids them rise from their terrors and come to his side in battle. Tell them, and we will win. Go tell them, and give them my promise that no thief from Ammon shall shake the bride of Israel from our arms. <laughs> And they fell on the Ammonites and smote them. And went to the Israelites the land of Eretz Yisrael. And Saul the king went down to the city of Amalek, as God had commanded, and smote the people of Amalek, and won for the Israelites the land of Eretz Yisrael. Is that from the that speaks? You can hear me? You can see me? Why not, Tavia? Have we not always walked hand in hand since you were a child? Have we not followed you down the streets of the winter, all our warriors and prophets since the days of your youth? You know me! Yes, Tavia. We are alive together in the dream of Israel. And whenever a Jew dies, we all die with him. And all the glories and the wisdom of Israel. <coughs> And whenever our Jew is there, we are all born with him. God be praised! Hallowed be his name! Whoever thought he would give Tavia these wonders to see? Saul, the great king of Israel, if you can hear me and speak to me, then what am I worried about? What troubles have I got? You will tell me. You know you knows better. Nobody knows better than you do. You will tell me. Where is the Holy Land? Point out to me which way to go. Help me find your Eretz Israel. There is a bridge to cross. Again, a bridge. Where is the bridge? Tell me. Let me see it. I'll cross it.
David, wonderful king, what a fine face you have. My heart opens up when I look at you. I remember when, when you danced in the streets of Yerushalayim before the Ark of the Covenant. What a fine day that was. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just one minute. Before you go to smite them, David, Saul, I shouldn't ask you when you were busy, but if you can't point to me the way to Eretz Israel, talk to me a little. Tell me, is it still there? Such a place, such a land. The judgments of the Lord are on all the earth. He hath given his covenant forever. The word given to a thousand generations. The covenant made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac, saying, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. And the Lord gave the children of Abraham the land of their desire. And he broke the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron asunder. And he turned the wilderness into a standing water and dry ground into water springs. And he gave them the fruits of their labor and the land of Israel in which to keep his laws. Now the night is deep, and Israel draws its sword. Get Shabbos. We have lit the candles. We have prayed. Now God should feel happy if nobody else. Have you sit down. We'll eat. Not fish, not meat, not noodle soup, but a piece of old bread and some bones. Who are you looking at, Tevia? What is there to see? Do you expect Reb Zundel to come out of his grave in a chicken cooked in each hand? Just sit down, Tevia. Here's a full supper, not enough to live on, but enough to keep from dying. Young boy, David, if you are hungry, come here by our table and sit down. In a minute, Tevye will make prayers and the food will taste better to the Almighty. Tevye, <coughs> come eat. Um, I'm not hungry. An hour ago, you were falling down with hunger. Who has been feeding you? The ravens of Elijah, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'm hungry. But it, it seems to me I don't want to eat. <clears throat> On Friday night, Everything in the house was lovely to see. The white curtains hanging on clean windows, the floor polished, the kitchen smelling with fresh bread, and lots of people sitting around our table for supper. Lots of people in our house. Oh, so many people. Wait, Schmulek. Yasala, your papa has to make a prayer first. No, Tevya, God is waiting to hear from his favorite bracha maker, Ume. How nice everybody looks. What are you doing, Rachala? Enough luxury. Leave some room for the fish. Yasala, Yasala, use a napkin. Don't wipe your hands on the tablecloth. Esther, you are not eating. Stop sitting there in a dream and eat. <laughs> ah, ah, excuse me, the Bahala is crying again. I've been and the Where were you Jews? 
Where were you when the killing was going on? When the six million were being burned and buried alive in the lime pits? Where were you? Where was your voice crying, against, crying out against slaughter? We did not hear any voice. There was no voice. You Jews of America, you Jews of England, strong Jews, rich Jews, high up Jews, Jews of power and genius, where was your cry of rage that could have filled the world and stopped the fire? Nowhere, because you were ashamed to cry out as Jews. You would rather let us die than speak out as Jews. A curse on your silence, that frightened silence of Jews that made the Germans laugh as they slaughtered. You, with your Jewish hearts, hidden in your American boots, you, you let the six million die rather than make the faux pas of seeming a Jew. We heard your silence in the gas chambers. And now, now you speak a little. Your hearts squeak, and you have a dollar for the Jews of Europe. Thank you. Thank you. Don't do it all. You are the one who prays, Tevya. Pray to God, then, to save us who are left from that last curse. The charity of frightened Jews. Those Jews who were afraid to cry out are sending us now bagel and pieces of meat. They are going to feed the beggar with wild eyes at the back door of the world. Feed him for a few days and then slam the door in his face. <sighs> to eat for a few days is not too bad, Boodle. I spit on their food. If we weren't so hungry, Maybe we could move a little faster to Eretz Yisrael. Tevya, you are a wise man. Then understand, it is not us they are feeding, but their own timid souls. We want freedom from the pogrom, from the hate of Europe that smolders around our feet. We want a land to live in. And they set us instead scraps from their rich tables. And they tell each other, look how noble we are. How good we are. We have fed some Jews. Me they haven't fed yet. And if they fed me something, I would be wise enough to eat it. A wise man always eats first and then figures out what is wrong afterwards. Afterwards? What afterwards, Tevya? After we eat a few more meals, we go back to being garbage people again. And the noble, money-giving Jews can go back to their silence. The silence that will keep the roads of Palestine closed for us as they kept the gas chambers of the Germans open. Maybe they are not so silent, Dovidal. In a place like this, you don't hear very much. They are silent. My son, my son, we have worse enemies than Jews with bagel. To die in front of enemies, I dream of that. But to die alone at night, and not even hear guns, but hear only the voices of Jews arguing, arguing, arguing a race out of existence. That's written as our fate. We will die, the rest of us, not in the spears of our enemies, but in the arguments of the Jews outside. I thought I saw a bridge. There is no bridge, Tanya. You were right. We sit here in a graveyard, and our homeland is underneath. Nowhere else. Underneath. Tevya, are you here, Tevya? I'm here, Zelda. What else? I have to rest, Tevya. Help me rest. It hurts someplace. No, Tevya, nothing hurts. You're tired. Yes, tired. Tevya, play for me in the synagogue today. Around here, Zelda, there is no synagogue. 
It must be. Some place. There is always some place a synagogue. I bet I wouldn't ask for. I would tell you nowhere to find a bed and food. I just tell you nowhere the food grows. But God, my Tevya, always knows where to find him. God and his synagogue find one Tevya and pray for me. Yes, Elder, I will find. And so, Tevya goes looking for a synagogue, not with his legs, but with his hungry and fevered soul. And Tevya's soul, like a bird fleeing a bitter climb, moves southward, moves southward toward the land of milk and honey. And his inner eyes behold the wonders of which he has read and dreamed since childhood. The inner eyes of the ghetto Jew of Europe were not for seeing God only, but for looking on his own manhood. This is Tevye's last secret in the graveyard, that he dreams of the glory of being a man. His soul has not accepted the lower levels designed for it by the hate and villainy of the world. It will not bow to contempt or murder. Condemned to survive as human rubbish, it will lift itself out, out of the dust, and move bewilderedly toward its destiny manhood. Such is the reason of Tevye's journey to Palestine. There his manhood lies. There he will go, or die reaching it, or die reaching for it. And so Tevye leans against a tombstone as his soul goes looking for a synagogue, a little Jew in his talus, for whom hope will never die. And behold, this time, the dream brings King Solomon to him. The form of my beloved. Behold, he cometh leaping from the mountains, skipping upon the hills. Rise up, my love, and come away. For lo, the winter is past. The rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth, and the time of the singing of birds is come and the voice of the turtle is heard in our land. My beloved is mine, and I am his. He feedeth among the lilies. I will rise now and go about the city. In the streets and in the broadways, I will seek him whom my soul loveth. Come with me from Lebanon. Look from the top of Amana, from the top of Shemuz and Harmon, from the lion's dens, from the mountains of the leopard. Awake, O north wind, and come now south. Blow upon my garden that the, that the spices thereof may flow out. Let my beloved come into his garden and eat his pleasant fruits. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, if ye find my beloved, that ye tell him that I am sick with love. Thou art beautiful, O my love, as Tirzah, comely as Jerusalem, terrible as an army with banners. Set me as a seal upon thy heart, as a seal upon thine arm. My vineyard is before me. Make haste, my beloved, and be thou like a young heart upon the mountains of spices. It is like it is written. Every stone stands like it is written, the Temple of Solomon. I have but a thing to see. Come nearer to me, Tevya of Dubinki. How is this possible? How can King Solomon in all his glory know Tevya? The pleasant fruits of my garden are yours, Tevya. It's enough I can see you and talk to you. Who wants more presents? 
I am in Eretz Israel. I stand in the Holy Land in front of King Solomon. Yes, the upright shall dwell in the land, and the perfect shall remain in it. But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth, and the transgressors be rooted <coughs> out of it. You know my sayings, Tevye? Who doesn't? <coughs> what other land have we got to dwell in than your sayings, King Solomon? Where else are the transgressors rooted out than in your lovely words? So we live in them, and we die in them. They are our holy land where everything goes on fine, better than any place else. Blessed be the name of the Lord and the wisdom of Solomon. He that despises his neighbors sinneth, but he that hath mercy on the lowly, happy is he. Amen. Ah, what a pleasure it is to listen to the wisdom of Solomon. Even when you are hungry and dying, wisdom is always a pleasure. I food, houses, children, life, everything else they can take from you. Wisdom they have to leave you is the only thing a Jew has that they don't want. You weep, Tevya. Who weeps? I should come to King Solomon and weep in front of all his glories? No. Tevya says only, hallelujah, hallelujah. There are tears in your words. Bitterness laughs in them. I am a judge in Israel, Tevya. If you have a complaint that calls for a judgment, bring it to me. A complaint? Yes, maybe I have a complaint. Against whom is your complaint, Tevya? Against whom? What is the name of your enemy, Tevya? The name of my enemy? Speak, Tevya, his name. It's a name I don't like to say aloud, King Solomon. Who has a voice to say such a name? Not Tevye. Is it the name of a powerful king, Tevye? A king's name I could speak, even two kings. But this is a name bigger than kings. You are in a court of God's justice. You have nothing to fear, Tevye. Afraid I'm not, King Solomon but ashamed. Anyway, I'll give you the name of my enemy. Why not? It's no secret. The name of my enemy is the world. The world? You mean the land in which you live? <sighs> the land in which I live, the land in which I don't live, from here to there, across and around, the whole world, up and down. This is what I mean. What have you done to make so great an enemy, Tevya? I am a Jew. The name that brought glory to the world. Glory it brought, but not for Jews. The reason, Tevya? The reason? I don't know. Who can know the reason for why he is hated? Because we are weak, we are hated. Because we are strong, we are hated. Because we are rich, because we are poor, because we are wanderers, because we refuse to wander. Wherever there is a reason that fits nothing and nobody, that's the reason we are hated. Speak on. God scattered us from our house. So we went to new lands and helped build the new houses. And when the house was built, the owner every time said, I have a fine house now. There was only one thing wrong with it. In the basement, under the kitchen, where the coal is kept, lives a Jew. If we throw him out, then we will have a finer house. I will give you my judgment, Tevya. My judgment is that you return to your own house. Fine, fine, I am going. I am walking with Zelda at night looking for Eretz Israel. But how can I go? They stop us. 
Who stops you, Tevye? Who? Everybody. The world stops us. In Europe, they burned us. Millions and millions of people, they didn't want us in the land of Europe. In the houses we helped to build. So when they were finished killing us, those who are left start to run from the ashes and they say, stop. Jews can't leave the land of Europe and the doors of the Holy Land are closed against us. Who are left? Who closes the doors, Tevya? Who? <clears throat> the same one. The world. This is my judgment, Tevya. Go to the world. Speak to it. Be not afraid of its mighty counsels. For in you is my own wisdom and the wisdom of the books you have treasured, the wisdom of God, whose name you have kept bright. Go to them, Tevya, and find their soul that is hidden beneath the vanities of their power and the veils of their hate. In you, Tevya, is the tongue of greatness, the tongue that fashioned the eternal words of justice. Speak with it to the counsels of the mighty, Tevya. Speak and be not afraid. Blessings flow. Festooned and elderly custodians of history. Power faces carved out of the dreams and confusions of the people of the earth. High priests from the bloody altars of Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Panoplied spokesmen for armadas, atom bombs, and the lusts of trade and politics. Wazirs, satraps, poobahs, princes and kings of protocol and pronouncement. Majestic visages whose eyes glitter with the wrath of governments, whose tongues sound the high mass of ownership. Mighty of the earth, who stand guard before the doors of the future. A delegate comes to address you. A man, a small man with somewhat weary feet. Excuse me. I didn't know I had my, my talus on. A talus you don't wear for asking a little favor on earth. First, I want to thank you for all being here. It is a great honor for Teddy from Dubinki to stand in front of so many fine people. Even if he has nothing to stand on except a grave. A grave, I say. Who knows what I'm standing on? On a barrel or plain air. All I know is, I am standing, and it seems to me, I'm also talking. And even it seems to me, the whole world is listening. We are pretty busy today, Tevya. It even speaks to me. Be brief as you can, Tevya. We have a full agenda. Don't worry, I'm used to fitting into an agenda. Red Zondo and Dubinki used to say, Tell you, when the world comes to an end, with a Messiah or without a Messiah, there will have to be a second ending to take care of the Jews. Because Jews are not in the world. They are on the agenda. Russia has no time to waste, gentlemen. Nor has the United States. Nor France. Nor England. Be brief, Tevya. Brief, why not? What have I got to say that takes long? I want to go to Palestine. Is this a Jew? Who else wants to go to Palestine? You will answer without Oriental evasions. Without Oriental evasion, I'm a Jew. And with them, I'm also a Jew. However you twist him and turn him, Tevi is left a Jew. Your presence here is decidedly bad form. Utterly bad form. More than that, I'd say his presence here is definitely a breach of international courtesy. A deplorable breach. Why is it that the Jews always push themselves 
to the head of the line, Evia. The Jews are not at the head of the line, but at the bottom of misfortune. And they did not push themselves there. They were pushed by gentlemen, maybe like yourself, who think that as long as a Jew is standing, he is in the wrong place. I see no reason to listen further to this illegal interlude. No reason at all. Well, speaking for the United States, I think we could stretch a point and permit this delegate to speak. Well, what do you mean? I mind you, off the record. I object most strenuously, sir, to identifying this fellow as a delegate. A delegate from where? He has a rather upped his name. The objection overruled. You take exception to your attitude, Russia. My word, man, we're at war with the Jews. There are no Jews. Russia does not tolerate either anti-Semitism or Semitism. <laughs> <laughs> My dear fellow, this is hardly the time or place for such idealistic twaddle. I speak for a nation engaged in the blood and sweat and tears of a great crisis. A nation at war with the Jews. Excuse me, but I would like to ask what you were doing sitting there in a the front seat. You Germans were already defeated, so what is Germany doing in her front seat again? I am not Germany, I am England. England? England is having a war with the Jews? Who can believe such a thing? Excuse me, are you sure you are England? I don't answer the fellow. He was always such a wily beggar with a genius for giving his betters a bad name. Dead Jews in a gas chamber have that genius, but not Tevye. Not yet. I advise you, Tevye, not to exhaust our patience with emotional name calling. Who is calling names? Not Tevye. He bows to you fine gentlemen. And if there are tears in his eyes, please look somewhere else, because I am not here to sit shiva. I am here only to speak to somebody about a very small piece of ground. Hardly big enough to be noticed, not even ground, sand, sand and flies and no water. A piece of worthless but holy land called Palestine. Search, see if the rest was armed. <laughs> Who is armed? I have two arms to work with, if there's work, and two to eat with if there's food, sometimes. What other arms has a Jew? Your mockery is ill timed, Tavia. The Jews are attacking the English with weapons of war. Guns, bombs, guns, mines. God almighty, is this true? Thrice you have told me. But how can it be? The Jews should attack England to try to overthrow such a great country? Who wants to live in London? Or even Birmingham? Delegates, I move that we clarify the situation for Tavia. France seconds the motion. Gentlemen, Russia considers the clarification unnecessary and imperialistic. There is no tether. We're must have by Joe. I say there is a tether. Yes, yes, yes. And I stand ready to implement to, to implement that fact. There are certain irrefutable facts of which Russia is not aware. Ladies and gentlemen, please, this is not a bar room. This is a court of nations, and I move that we put the issue to a vote. Front seconds the motion. All those gathered here under the covenant of the four freedoms who believe there is a Tevye, signify by saying, I. I. Those who believe there is no Tevye, signify by saying, no. No. <laughs> the eyes have it. There is a Tevye. Then Russia walks. Where were we? We were going to clarify the situation for Tevya. Ah, uh, yes indeed. Now that we've admitted his existence, I think the next move in all logic and decency is to clarify it. And I suggest that England be allowed that privilege. Thank you very much. The situation, Tevya, is very simple. The Jews in Palestine have taken up arms against British law and order. Is it the law and order left over by Buchenwald or Dachau, maybe? It is the law and order of the British Empire that prohibits the entrance into Palestine of refugee Jews from Europe. The Jews of Palestine have broken the law. 
If somebody makes a law against humanity, who is the lawbreaker? I object to submitting ourselves to this campaign of vilification. Who, who is vilifying? If a pig looks into a looking glass, is it a campaign of vilification who looks out? I take it that the pig in question is an Englishman? Not always. I see nothing to be gained by quibbling with this bold and mocking semi. It is too late for words. England has declared a state of war against Palestine Let me and... assure you, Tevia, that this was done without the knowledge or consent of the United States. Thank you. Thank you. That's almost as good as making a protest. Not quite, maybe, but it's something Reb, Reb Zundel used to say. A dead Jew is always grateful that somebody did not consent to his being killed. I must ask you to curb your unhappiness, Tevia, and not give up hope. We have scheduled a number of conferences on the Palestine situation, and the subject is not closed. Fine. Fine. This is the usual situation for the Jews. The subject is always open. But everything else is closed. Look, gentlemen, I would like to talk to you. I have come a long way to talk to you about why the Jews belong in Palestine. Impossible, my dear fellow. A censorship has been declared against anything, anything you have to say. How can you make a censorship against people who have nothing left but a little voice? I move that Tevye be given the floor. Rod beckons the motion. The motion is out of order. The Jew is a criminal in Palestine and has forfeited all parliamentary rights. How did I forfeit? What did I do wrong? Palestine was given to the Jews, and England was told to take care of it for a while and make it into a Jewish homeland. This I remember from yesterday. And everybody said, don't worry about Palestine now. Good England is fixing up the Holy Land for the Jews. So who is the criminal now? The policeman who stole or the beggar who was robbed? I demand the arrest of this traitor. I demand his arrest immediately. Please, please, we must proceed according to rule. The motion has been made and seconded that Tobia be given the floor. A bloody outrage. How would you Americans like some stupid redskin to come into this court bellowing for the return of the state of Pennsylvania? All those in favor of Tevia having the floor so signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed so signify by saying no. No. The ayes have it. Sorry, pal. Uh, quite all right, old boy. out of everything, stones, trees, clouds. So why shouldn't he speak out of Tevye? Speak, Tevye. Hurry, hurry, tell, tell. tell. Speak for the dead and the children of the dead. The world, it is like this. In the old days, the Jews did not need Palestine because they had many fine homelands in Europe. Wherever you looked were Jews, sometimes rich, sometimes poor. And they worked hard in all the lands. And they made songs and wrote books and they, they, they sat with other people and helped make inventions, operas, armies. And in the old days when somebody said to me, Tevya, go to Palestine and live in the Holy Land like a good Jew. I answered them back, why do I have to go anywhere? I am through going. Name me a place in the world I have not gone in and gone out. 
Now I have a home. Europe. Save us, Tavia. Speak and save us. Tell, tell, Tavia, tell. Then it turned out this was only a dream about a home. A dream that died in the gas chamber. So it died, and all the Jews died with the dream. Forgive me, not all, almost all of the Jews. How can we, how can, so how can we who didn't die still have a dream? <coughs> no, the dream is gone. Now we ask for another home, another place where we can dream. We are human beings. So where is there such a place? Where else but Palestine? Palestine, where we came from long ago. Palestine, it was given to England to hold for us because England was an honorable country. Because the Jews fought beside England and drove the Turks from the land. Because the honor and conscience of the world said, Palestine belongs to the Jews. Guard it, England, for them. Fix it for them. Let them have a home there, ready. So who is the home for now? Jews? No Englishmen. Why Englishmen? Have the Englishmen no other place to live? Look on the world. On one fourth of it lived Englishmen. How rich must the man become before he doesn't steal a last crust from his brother? And when he steals this crust, why he must cry robber at the hands he has emptied? Listen to me, England. Englishmen. Do you remember how the Jews helped to build Europe and England too? Have you forgotten so soon how the Jews fought beside you in the bad battles to Brook and Alamein? So I tell you, as we built and fought and brought honor to the world, that is how we will build Palestine. Look, Englishmen. Look how nice it would have been if you had acted a little differently toward America long ago. If you had not hired German Hessians to fight the young Americans as you were hiring Arabs to fight the Jews now, think how nice it would have been if you had not said to the colonies in America, no, no, you can't have what you want. You must be punished for daring to be men and defying English law and order. Ah, if you had not said no, no to your halutsim in America, then you would have a finer empire today. An empire nobody would have, would have had to help save all the time. Yes, a fine empire with a British land called America. Besides, can't you remember, Englishmen, that you have never won a war against the people that wanted to be free? So why make another war against people now and lose it? And lose your own honor and lose all the fine things that Englishmen have fought for? when they were defending themselves and called the world to help them by crying that everybody should be allowed to live on earth without fear or oppression. Who wouldn't fight for such a cause? How can it be that when you win such a cause you start fighting Jews? Why, for a little oil, you were ready to put out all the lights of English honor? Why, because you don't want to do wrong by the Arabs? Since when does England worry about doing wrong to people whose land it steals? And who would treat the Arabs better? Jews, who are their brothers? Or Englishmen, who are their masters? I we know who the Arabs are. They are English, an English lie with a burnous on it. They are an English lie so that England will seem like a nation with a cause and not a robber with a camel for a disguise. Tell more. Tell. Speak for us. Save us. Speak for the dead and their children. Tell. Tell. Listen to me, Americans. My people were killed in Europe by the Germans, and Tevye is left with a handful. Let them into Palestine where they die, all they're left. Why did you fight the Germans? So you could take over their work of killing the rest of the Jews? You have conferences. You have more conferences. How many conferences do you need to hold before one of the freedoms for which your soldiers fought and died can exist? Look, I see Jewish faces standing here. Standing among the great ones of the world, let me talk to the great Jewish faces who belong to other lands. Jewish faces in the old days 
Palestine was no business of yours. You could look at Europe and say, my Tevye, why should the Jews go to, go to Palestine? They're in a fine place now, living fine, doing fine. And you could feel proud when you looked at the Jews of Europe. They were covered with honors. They were your relatives. But now who are your relatives? Broken, wandering Tevyas. Is it nice to be related to such people like Tevya and nobody else? Will you be able to feel grand and hold up your heads when the word Jew becomes a word like the word beggar, like the word pariah, like the word vermin, and there is no other word for him? If your relative is a beggar, how rich are you in the eyes of the world? If your relative is a piece of rubbish, a beaten, hunted scarecrow of a Jew, how much does your neighbor think of your silk hat? How much better if you have a fine relative in Palestine, a relative who builds a land, a relative who makes inventions and offers and armies again? So Tevye says to you, you Jewish faces, Palestine is now in the business of every Jew, wherever he is. If he wanders through forbidden roads of Europe, whipped and dishonored, or if he is in the finest houses of England or America. And Tevye says to everybody, to the whole world here, under all its fine flags, the Jews are tired of being a sickness in the souls of others. Be tired with us. You couldn't swallow us. And who wants to swallow you? Let us go and become a nation instead of a sickness in strangers' lands. Let us go and build a little land of our own. Let us go and become part of the world, an arm, a hand, a finger of the world, instead of a fever in alien veins. Teddy says, Open one little door for the Jews who have opened so many big doors for everyone else. Open one little door to Palestine, to Eretz Yisrael. <laughs>
laughing at Tevya and his beggar's cap. With whom are you ple pleading there, Tevya? With the hyenas? Dead ears, Tevya. The dead and the living have the same ears for the Jew. Dead ears. Zelda? Zelda? Zelda! Zelda! Now there's one less. I will dig a place for her, and we will go without her. Without her? She will walk with us, with the other ghosts. She will walk beside us. She gave me bread and food. She gave me sons and daughters. The dead have a home together. My wife sleep, my little bride who loved me sleep, my little girl so quiet, nothing to remember. My tired bones, my broken heart, my friendly face, sleep in peace, sleep long. Stand up, Tanya. We have a long road to go, Tanya. Where? No, I can't go. Don't you see, there's somebody here for me. Where? There. Is it better there, Tanya? Is the ground softer, Tanya? Is the darkness sweeter, Tanya? Why not? Better to be dirt than to be a Jew. Dirt, cold dirt, that feels nothing when feet walk on. Lucky Tevya. Go on, Dubino. Where? With what? The world tears my heart out, and you want it to beat with hope. A heart on the end of a stick, beating with hope. The hate of a world chews on my brain and you wanted to dream. Of what use is a man in darkness? Of what use is a Jew in a world of poison and shame? You, world, who made a garbage peep pile of my people. You did not kill me. An oversight, to be corrected. You kill me now. You, and sky forbidden the Jews, I give you my unlived years, my uneaten bread. I give you my unused loins, my brain that never dreamed, my heart that never sang. I go back to the garbage pile you made for me and mine. David, David, we're waiting for you, David. Who are you? We are the Hebrew army of Palestine. We are the soldiers of the Haganah and the Ergun. We are the sternest. What do you want of me? You! We fight in Palestine, in the streets of Jerusalem and Tel Aviv, in the hills of Lebanon, in the deserts of Judea. We hold the gates of our land open at night for the Jews of Europe. We fight to open them in the daylight. We need you. You are far away. No, we are in your heart. Far away. Don't you hear our guns, David? We battle the English, the sly and powerful English. We speak to them in a new Jewish language, the language of guns. We fling no more prayers or tears at the world. We fling bullets. We fling barrages. We die in the streets fighting, and our enemies die with us. We fight for Palestine. Come, David. No one laughs at Jews in Palestine. Torture, yes. Violence and death, yes, but no laughter. It's no laughter, laughing matter to kill a Jew in Palestine. It takes tanks and planes and armies. The path is dead, David. We have thrown into the Red Sea. It lies in the bottom of the sea, the whole black half of the Jews. Today our ancient wisdom speaks out of cannon valves. The Jews of Jews die singing and chanting tomorrow's victory. Come, David. Saul and the Maccabees live again in Palestine. 
Their strong arms are bared again. We promise you an end of bleeding in Proverbs. The manhood the world took from us roars again in Palestine. We promise you war. A war against the sly and powerful robbers of England. We promise to rest our homeland on the British cross, like the Americans did in the Dutch of Africa and the Irish. We promise you barricade and a loud battle cry. We promise a war that will not be done until the disabled flag is in the flag. White and Bottles over Palestine. We promise you the courage that will obey all the Jews that will die in the great and heal of the world. We promise you a battle front of Jews that will stand and die and stand again until the Hebrew nation rises out of the Hebrew soul. How do I go to join you? There's a bridge to cross. A shining bridge. It's the bridge of honey and fortitude, of youth and wild courage. That bridge is in your heart. It's the bridge that reaches from the dark in which you stand into the promised battle and the promised land. Put your feet on that bridge and walk. You will scurry down dark roads. You will hide under trains and in dark quarters of ships. You will rob, lie, kill, and claw your way forward through many hostile lands. But the bridge will bear you always. It will carry your feet in your soldiers' hands to us, to the streets of battle, to the land where man going and a gun wait for you. Come, David, and fight for power. Come, David, heaven, we get birth to a flag. 